now, especially in the world of big data, right? Actuaries are your people. Yeah. We are smart. We are smart enough to, to understand the dynamics, especially when it comes to risk and understand every business has risk. Sure. Right? And that's where we specialize in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You are talking about board exams. Um, I would assume that you are taking the board exams. How are they, man? Like I've had students uh, that, uh, you know, you know, about the board exams and how many are you supposed to take? And uh, um, how many... I'm not sure now with the, there's two people, right? A UK and SA. Yeah. I think there's, if you are writing with UK, you have one less board exam, uh, which is a junior exam. If you are writing with ASA, you have one extra exam, right? Which is, uh, uh, they, they decided to keep life contingency and mathematics of finance separate in South Africa. But in the UK, they've, they've combined those. So I think all in all, it's about, uh, I'll tell you now. So you have in South Africa, I'm speaking for South Africa. In South Africa, you have seven junior exams. You have two that make you an associate. And then you have three that make you uh, fully qualified. So that means seven, nine, 12. So you have 12 uh, exams that are required but now they've introduced some sort of like um, practical stuff that you need to do, that you need to go through. So within that practical stuff, there's also tests, there's also exams that happen there. So I don't know how many those count for, but the major exams you need to take, uh, as I said, I think 12, yeah. to take 12 exams. Yeah. And it's still, it's going to still be a long journey, man. Yeah, and and, and and what are the opportunities? I mean, um, in your field, Oof. Oof. <laughs> I didn't have to say that, ben. right? Ah, ben, <laughs> like, don't say it, you know, <laughs> Ben, Munna, understand this, right? Yeah, the majority of South African people still don't understand what actuaries do, sure, and understand if 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 something has that information of that thing is that it's that rare that means the people that do it are still special and very special yeah, yeah. and that's why munna that's why you can't it's i i'm yet to find an actually that is unemployed sure you know what i mean and we people are coining it yeah. people are getting a lot of money and there's a lot of opportunities because now, especially in the world of big data, right? Actuaries are your people. Yeah. We are smart. We are smart enough to, to understand the dynamics, especially when it comes to risk and understand every business has risk. Sure. Right? And that's where we specialize in. We yeah. are good at that. And what makes us or separates us from the rest of the people is the fact that we are able to add um, statistics into things, right? And not only statistics, but also to account for mortality. Ooh. And that's what makes us unique. And that's, that what, that's what gives us the, the, the upper hand against other careers. The fact that we can use stats and mortality to, to speak about risk. You know, I'm I'm laughing because, <laughs> yeah. You know, I met this um this guy um, you know, who who he's a, he's also an actual I think analyst in in one of the yeah. the, the the insurance company. He deals mainly with insurance, yeah. right? <laughs> so we're having this argument, and then then he says to me that he he start like he's talking to me, but I can see, I can sense that he's actually you know cropping out stats, extracting stats from me. Like he's asking me sure. questions and everything like that. And it's like, to me that, you know, I can somehow estimate your mortality rate. And I was like, chief, you are here trying to tell me like 
my death rate like come on chief he was even saying to me that you know <laughs> with what the information that i have i can yeah start to you know if i can create what do they call it like an insurance policy premiums and everything like that i, yes. I can because those information actually goes into how they decide or how they model yes the, the prices that people pay yes. on premiums and everything like that and he was telling me that yes. if i go for insurance he can actually tell me what i would likely be premium or what the kind yes. of premium i'm going to pay based on yes. that and but he was insisting on telling me my mortality rate like who wants to hear about their death no nah, no nobody does man no nobody, nobody does yeah so those uh, and those are called uh, pricing actuaries right so i think there's 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 i think various scopes but the ones that i'm aware of that uh, seem to be dominating is is pricing and valuations right yeah. so you are either yeah but there's also marketing actuaries and yeah they they keep going on and on but the bigger ones is either you are doing pricing where you you're doing what you are saying where you are trying to estimate the price of something the cost of it right but in order to get to that cost you need to model um using your your mortalities your inflation your returns all of those things so those are called pricing actuaries and then there's those that will evaluate uh that money now i get uh, now you are paying and you are paying and now they want to see the value or the portfolio of that thing so they'll do a valuation of the whole company to see if it's sound or that department that does insurance there'll be those that are valuing that uh those prices that are keep, that keep coming in um or, or those premiums that keep coming in and keep coming in so yeah so there's pricing and there's uh, there's valuating uh, actually so i belong on the valuation space so those um the, 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 i see a lot of uh, actuarial science students carrying this there's this yellow book i think they call it the, it's a life tables or something yes um, life tables yeah i have yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> that's like a bible right <laughs> that's a bible man that is a bible what is it that, that is a that bible book? uh it's it's different mortalities man um so some bit of stats as well i've seen a bit of stats um but mostly we use it for mortalities because it has tables that were 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 done um in in the past right but when you get to workspaces they use different tables so those tables that we use i think they are purely for 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 academic purposes yeah. so that you you get the the results that will be the same as everybody else right but when you start to enter like my space uh, i'll make you an example i used to do um okay let me not speak on that uh, like now when we doing the the replacement ratio the stuff that i was telling you about right sure. we use a table but that table is different we 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 get different tables depending on what uh, maybe you can even get it from stats essay you know to oh. speak about the amount the population of south africa mm. and how many men uh, 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 of age a certain age have died and all of that and all of that so you take those sort of tables and and use them for your results but obviously after you've concluded you need to state that i'm using these tables mm. so that the people can actually get the same results but sometimes you find that i think i've seen with my bosses right uh asa would maybe produce certain things for them and they would use that so that uh, amongst all the actuaries because it's not a, a large community when they you when they do because we do a lot of peer reviewing right uh so when you do a lot of peer reviewing at least we can end up with the same results yeah sounds very interesting yeah. and and uh very much so man very much so yeah and i i also saw from your from your profile your working profile that at some point you have to read some uh, uh you have to collaborate with psychologist um and and yes. take the reports and then from there analyze them from an actual background and because some i think at some point you, or i'm not sure if you're still dealing with the raf um yes. that you need to actually now look at the laws and and how yes. to bring the actual in the laws like such yes. beauty man ah man it's awesome so i didn't want to i actually remember when i said to you i mean let me not maybe get into that it was because i didn't want to confuse the listeners because now it's going to be like oh, this guy is doing so many things like what's on hand you know <laughs> uh, but yeah man before before i did, excuse me before i did pension funds 
uh, with the same company, I was actually doing road accident fund calculations, right? And that's the example I wanted to use to say the tables for road accident fund actually are, are different from the yellow book, right? We're using yeah. uh, a different table to, to calculate those, 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 those values. But yeah, I, 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 yeah, I did road accident fund and the beauty of, of, of making the words change into numbers and then bring them to words again so that a, a lawyer can understand what you are telling. I mean, it's beautiful, man. It's, 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 it's really amazing. Because man. at that point, what we do is you will find a report from an industrial psychologist, right? Literally what they're saying is how much this person is earning and um, what they think the person will be earning in the near future. And you have to take all of that and push the money forward because now the person works up until age 65, right? Yeah. So you need to push all of their earnings. Maybe if they got an accident at uh, two years old, imagine two years old, you then look at the history of the, of the child, look at the mother, look at the father uh, and everybody, if they were um, academics like yourself. So say you, okay, let me make an example for, like myself, right? I'm an actual analyst. My wife is a qualified CA. We have a kid. Our kid gets into an accident and I claim to road accident fund, right? When we do the calculation, we need to understand that there is a very high chance that my kid will be in academia. So when I do the scenario for my kid, I have to include they get a degree. I have to include a scenario where they get a degree. I have to include a scenario where they are an entrepreneur. I have to include a scenario where they don't get the degree at all. You know what I mean? But they have that ability to have those different ranges. And my kid is privileged from that standpoint, right? But if you look at me without the, 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 the degrees, maybe while I was still in the township, right? My mom is not educated. Most of my people that I stayed with were not educated. So to actually say that I was going to get a degree is highly unlikely. So you find that sometimes we chop out that degree part to say, ah, maybe Mdu was going to be a policeman or whatnot, or whatnot, or whatnot, depending on how it's substantiated. And then we calculate from there the amount to say, if Mdu, Mdu's kid is two years old, got into the accident, he would have started working around 24 because he would have finished his junior degree, right? Mm -hmm. And then when they start working at 24, how much are they earning? Then we use the, those tables, we use the amounts, and then we take from 24 to age 65, which is the normal retirement age in South Africa, right? So within that entire period of, of, of whatever time between uh, 65 and 24, um, we, we, we take the money forward to 65. And then when it gets to 65, you need to then take all of that money, bring it back to today's value to say what it would be today. And that's what then you need to write a report on as an actuary, as an actuary. So we used to write those reports after we've done the numbers because we would estimate for um, before the accident, right? If you didn't get into the accident, your projections, the way I set them to 65 and bring them back. And now since you have the accident, what do we think you're gonna be, right? because now you are disadvantaged, remember. So we're gonna take all of that money again, push it forward, bring it back to today's money. And then from there, it's just common mathematics. You just do the difference between the two. That difference is the money that road accident fund needs to pay somebody. So now I need to tell that story in a report after I've done those calculations in such a way that an, a, a somebody who didn't do actually would still be able to understand what I'm saying. You know, now after you've said this, I have so much, well, I will have so much um, respect for present values, future values. and probably Yes, yes. No, no, I'm trying to, those things are, <laughs> they speak volumes, eh? Like, I'm just listening to you those and I'm like. Those things speak volumes, man. Yeah, I'm just listening to you and I'm like, wow. Like, you Yeah. You know? No, those things speak volumes. That's why I'm saying money. And, and literally what actually you're doing is just moving money understanding the movement of money, money and the risks that are attached to it, right? Because even in road accident fund, there are things that as humans, we cannot account for. Sure. So we used to call that contingency. So we'd put a, a contingency percentage on our calculations so that we are saying, 
we have put this percentage to account for other risks mm. that we cannot foresee, mm. but we know that would exist. Right? So, yeah, yeah man. You have, no, to, you, have to, you have to love those things. That's very we are moving money, moving money, understanding risk. That's all literally that actually is due. Yeah. 